You uh, do hear because uh, I have a very bad internet, unfortunately. Uh, this is just a disaster here. Uh, now, uh, I want to thank you one more time for being with Ukraine, for being here online, uh, that Europe stands for Ukraine and, uh, uh, and doesn't give up on us. Uh, we do really need help, uh, your help and support. So um, I'm a little bit nervous actually, uh, but I, 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 I will try to do it uh, quite, uh, quite good. So uh, to start with, I would like to say that uh, almost all the Eastern, Northern and uh, Southern part of uh, uh, Ukraine is um, not uh, occupied, but uh, there are quite severe fights and uh, a lot of Russian uh, military, um, a lot of uh, Russian military techniques and machines and tanks. Uh, and uh, um, for, for example, Kharkiv, uh, Mariupol in Donbass, uh, Kharkiv city, Sumy, um, Mykolaiv uh, uh, are under great pressure. In Kharkiv, there is uh, no connection, no mobile uh, connection, no electricity or heat. The same situation is Mariupol. Um, people who, uh, who are now in Mariupol, we cannot uh, there, there is no connection with these people for almost three days. Uh, um, we, or the situation in Kherson, the southern part of Ukraine, is uh, very um, not, not not good, bad too, because uh, there are so many Russian people and uh, a lot of people and sometimes even Ukrainians uh, already say that Kherson is under control of Russia. But um, yes, it's uh, we can say that it is it can be a true story, but there is still a Ukrainian flag there. So uh, we do hope that we can uh, now stop everything which is uh, going on. A lot of people die only in Chernigov uh, yesterday, uh, approximately 50, 50 people died. Um, and maybe 10, if I'm right, uh, from them are, are uh, children. So the situation is very, um, very frightening. And uh, I would like to say, uh, I don't know if you have already heard about the situation in Enerhodar. This is a city where one of our um, nuclear plant uh, stations are, and there are six reactors. And uh, this, um, this night, Russian occupied, uh, killed the people who worked on this uh, nuclear plant station, killed those people and occupied the station. Uh, then a fire was there a great fire now fortunately uh, we managed to stop the fire and the level of radiation is okay for now but we have to understand that russian has this nuclear plant station and it is under russian control so uh, just to compare uh, if you remember chernobyl in uh, uh, 1986 only one reactor uh, was blown up and it was explosion only in one reactor and all Europe uh, and the Soviet Union was um, were, were frightened and it was a real disaster. Uh, now we have six reactors in Enerhodar in this nuclear plant station uh, and anytime Russians can make an explosion because because uh, no one can no, no one can control them uh, if we uh, keep fighting there they can explode the, the reactors one or several if we um, if we go uh, back uh, um, on the east and uh, stop the occupation uh, they can blow it up to so i, I don't we do not know do not know yet uh, what is the way to do what is the solution um, in this situation but uh, we are sure and persuaded that uh, not only ukraine 
not only Europe, uh, but the whole world is uh, uh, has a big threat of uh, the, the destruction because uh, if this nuclear plant uh, station will blow up, everyone will die or at least uh, there will be so bad consequences for everyone, not only Ukrainians or Euro Europeans. So um, as I said before, situation is really, um, is really not good. And Russia keeps uh, going uh, more and more to the Western Ukraine, to the Central Ukraine, closer and closer. Um, Ukrainians are fighting uh, bravely as much as they can. Um, we do thank Europe for all the uh, money and all the military um, items that you sent to Ukraine. But unfortunately, uh, this is not enough. Um, and uh, what we do really need now to prevent the nuclear explosion and uh, war ne next, um, we, we do need NATO to shelter our sky. We know that NATO uh, didn't want to do this, but as we Ukrainians, our government uh, president and Ukrainians uh, think, this is the only way now uh, to stop uh, uh, to stop Russians, at least in the spot they are now. Um, next, everything everything uh, except that uh, Ukrainians will try to do. Uh, but without a shelter in sky, uh, we think that there is no way. And uh, I don't know what is your opinion, but all of us do uh, are convinced that uh, first it will be Ukraine, next it will be Poland, uh, and next it will be all uh, the next uh, all, all the all the all the Europe, all countries, and uh, in. Um, we, we can say that it is even worse than in the uh, Second World War, because uh, in the Second World War, uh, different countries uh, and different people were fighting with each other. But now in Ukraine, Russia, which calls, uh, which calls herself uh, our brother, uh, kills us. And there are so many murderers. And so many um, children uh, are dead already. Uh, I don't know if uh, you have seen photos from Kharkiv, the most beautiful city in Ukraine. Uh, I know Reinhard was uh, in Kharkiv. Yeah, uh, it was the, the most uh, developed uh, city in Ukraine. So it is uh, it is completely on fire. There is nothing nothing alive, uh, almost nothing alive. People are, are underground, are hiding underground. There are no food, no food supplies. Today, Chernivtsi sent to Kharkiv uh, uh, humanitarian, um, humanitarian uh, cargo, if I may say so, uh, humanitarian help. But this was the first time when this help reached Kharkiv. The same situation was yesterday. Chernivtsi uh, region, uh, Chernivtsi military administration sent uh, a humanitarian help to Bucha and Irpin. This is two city, uh, cities near Kiev, where very severe battles are going all week long. Uh, and twelve, uh, we sent twelve trucks, big trucks, and uh, these uh, trucks are. Uh, were being uh, shooted, shelling, and now we have no connection to those drivers, and we do not know what has happened and where to to, to look for for them. Um, I do have a lot of uh, friends in Kharkiv, in Dnipro, in Chernihiv, in Sumy, uh, who calls or writes and say that uh, they are not only afraid; they think they will uh, definitely die. Certainly, so. Um, so it's uh, it's very very sad that that this is happening, and uh, if if Europeans, uh, if Pan Europe or Europa, if uh, anyone uh, here uh, can do at least a little step to uh, close Ukraine to, to, to make Ukraine more closer. 
to, um, to, to, to what we ask to shelter our sky, please do this, because we do think that there is no other choice. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm done. And what I would like to say more is that um, everyone knows about our President Zelensky. Uh, and last, um, uh, during the last month, his uh, um, numbers of his uh, uh, rating were, uh, were decreasing. But now, almost all of Ukrainian people, more than 90%, even 95, uh, support uh, him. Uh, we believe in him. We are thankful to him. And uh, uh, he, now he is our national hero. Just a question. What, what would you need uh, most by now when, when you think on, on, on delivery of, of, of goods, for example? Uh, the, the, the most we do need um, helmets, we do need uh, army clothes, we do need thermal, uh, thermal clothes. Uh, it is important for us to have uh, a vest, um, vest that, uh, help me please with the word, vest uh, for our army, um, military vests. Yeah, protection. Yeah, protection vests. Uh, I have... Uh, Actually, I have uh, a list of, uh, uh, of goods needed that Chernivtsi military administration, um, Chernivtsi military administration wrote this list. This is the most urgent uh, goods. Now I will um, I will put it here in our um, chat, and I can send everyone. And today evening I will put it on Pan Europa Ukraine page so everyone can find it. Uh, I know that a lot of volunteers, so many people are sending goods and food and medicine to Ukraine. And I know that these are not only Ukrainians in Europe, uh, these are Europeans. Thank you so much. Without you, I, I just cannot say how much your uh, help, uh, how much your help means to us. And please keep doing that. And please keep fighting for Ukraine because it's not uh, the matter is not only in of Ukraine. It's the matter of all Europe. Um, so, yeah, I, I will put the list uh, in Pan Europa page. And now here I will. Uh, um, I will send to. Yeah, Irina, many thanks for your fantastic words. I think you all give us all a good idea. You see, it's always good. I mean, when you see a thing on, on, on this, in the newspapers, it's on paper. But if somebody tells you full of feeling and burning eyes, it's very different. Many, many thanks. Super. I hope you all understand that we are recording this meeting because we want to put it on our different pan-European home pages because we want people to see. And I would like to know from you a little more about refugees because I know Chernovitz is quite close to Lviv and we understand all that Lviv is the main port for the refugees. Tell us a bit more about that. Uh, for the last data, as we know, um, more than one million people have already uh, left Ukraine. So uh, mostly they go to Europe, to European countries. Uh, now, um, I unfortunately, I do not have data about uh, how many uh, refugees and migrants are in the Western Ukraine, Lviv, Chernivtsi, Lutsk, Ivano-Frankivsk. But I can say that uh, my native, my ho home uh, city, Chernivtsi, are full of, uh, uh, are full of uh, um, cars, on the registration, not Chernivtsi registration. And there are so many uh, people who have uh, uh, no uh, place to live. And now there are so many, uh, and now Chernivtsi administration arrange uh, um, sleep places in schools, in university, and in places like this. And uh, uh, there are, so uh, for, 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 for instance, 100 people, with little children and uh, uh, old people, young people, uh, they are all living in uh, big, big rooms 
for example, in schools, uh, rooms that are for sport for children, I don't know the word, gyms, in gyms, yeah. And um, the situation is quite, uh, um, quite critical too. But uh, anyway, I do believe that uh, um, motor administration uh, does the great job because there are so many people from, uh, uh, from Eastern part of Ukraine and we do try to feed them to give them uh, to, to, to give them everything they need. And there are so many uh, cafes and restaurants in Chernivtsi which uh, still works and they um, they uh, they give food for people who are not from charity for free and it's not uh, the bad food you know uh, it's really a good one and uh, there are so many almost all of my um, all of people I know have someone from east uh, uh, south and north uh, Ukraine, northern Ukraine in their homes and so many people give their apartments or houses for free. So uh, we do support each other. Uh, we do support refugees. But, uh, but we think that tendency that people will leave Ukraine will be more and more, more and more people will go to Europe. And it's quite sad because Ukraine, and, uh, Ukraine needs uh, our people. Uh, we need them to help uh, not... Uh, not, not not to go to war because we have our military uh, people who can do this and army, but we need these people here to help uh, um, to, to, to help sort humanitarian uh, help that Europe sends. We need them to uh, to cook for the refugees and so on. Unfortunately, you will have uh, these uh, people at your home now. Yeah. So uh, maybe you have... Irina, may, may I ask you to please? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. If you want you. to talk, please raise. Well, we got Irina, please. Wrong with your microphone. I was only, I was only going to say we, we must. You must raise your hand if you want to talk. Otherwise, we can come into a big chaos. There is a little. If you look around your Zoom screen, there is at one place you can, where it says, um, raise your hand. Please do it that way because then it's easier for me to ask people if they have questions. And I just want to say that it's, it's really very impressive what you are telling and the thing, thing is again, that's when you read it in the paper, it's one thing. When, you he, when one hears you saying it, it's very different. And I hope you can imagine that there are more questions. If, uh, please, if I may add uh, what I would like to say about our um, Pan Europa Ukraine. So I'm in Charity now. It is quite a safe city, the safest, I think, for now in Ukraine. Um, our General Secretary, Igor Gavrilov, makes everything he, he, he can make to help uh, our army uh, in on the east. By the way, I think that he is with us uh, here on Zoom too. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I yeah. think so. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, and uh, our the head of Kiev Pan Europa, Nastya Hatsenka, she came to Chernivtsi region. Uh, she has no internet there now, and she is not here. But um, the, the thing that I would like to say that president of, of Pan Europa Ukraine, I have no connection to him. He, he, he is in Kyiv now and his family, whole family uh, is in Kyiv too. Um, I called him today, but uh, there was no, uh, no, no connection. I couldn't call him. So he is in territorial defense. He decided not to not to leave, but to stay and uh, to defend uh, Kiev, which is uh, in the constant uh, fire, in constant, uh, maybe ten or or twenty times a day. Yeah, so I do hope that he's okay, he's safe, and we will see him uh, very soon. And we will send Beth in in, in Ukrainian Crimea together. Irina, thank you very much. Please, when you talk to 
Igor, tell him our very best greetings. And we are trying, he knows that we are standing all behind you. But I mean, as long as Pan Europa Ukraine has somebody like you on board, I think it's absolutely fine. Yeah, I, I if hope you so. have questions, please press on the raise your hand. Irina, may I ask, uh, may I ask a, a short question? Uh, you mentioned that uh, Chernovitz is one of the safest cities at the moment in, uh, in, in, in Ukraine. Do you know how far away is the front line? Because the attack is coming from the south, from the north, from the east. Uh, how far away is, is it from, from Chernovitz, the fighting? Uh -huh. I, I, I can say that um, severe fights are, uh, for example, in Zhitomir, it's central Ukraine, it is just uh, 350 kilometers from Ukraine, uh, actually not far, so far, uh, so far away, uh, but um, um, but Chernivtsi, or, or for example, Odessa, it is uh, approximately, uh, this is quite, uh, uh, there, are, there aren't so severe battles, but the situation is very, very stressful there too. It is approximately 800 kilometers, as I know, from Chernivtsi. Uh, the nearest, uh, the nearest hotspot is Zhitomir, uh, but but Chernivtsi is uh, just 50 kilometers from Romania, uh, which is a NATO member. So we do hope um, that uh, Russia will be afraid to, to shoot here, shoot in this place and to come here. However, as Macron said yesterday uh, that he talked to Putin and Putin has uh, no intention to stop uh, if Ukraine uh, doesn't, uh, if, if Ukraine doesn't decide to give up. So uh, we can, we can expect anything, anything from this uh, madman. Okay. May, I, may I add a second question? I'm sure you have some friends in, in, in Russia or some of your friends in Chernivtsi have friends in Russia. Do you get any news from them how they see the situation from their Russian perspective? Uh, yeah, it's very, uh, it's very uh, dual because uh, some of uh, people we know in Russia and Belarus to uh, say that they are so sorry and they hate Putin and they uh, do support Ukraine and they um, they they cannot uh, cannot even believe that this is happening to our country, and they are and they blame Putin and Russia for that. But another part of uh, people that we do know, you know, it's not strangers, it's people uh, that we know, and sometimes these are relatives who say that, uh, um, that, that Putin does everything good, that Donbass, uh, uh, Donbass was suffering for eight years, and so we um, do deserve, uh, deserve this, that there are so many Nazis in uh, Nazi people in Ukraine. However, you know, um, more people in Ukraine speak, uh, uh, speak Ukrainian in Western part, which is in safe, safe now, uh, relatively. But Kharkiv, Dnipro, uh, Kiev, Sumy, Chernihiv, uh, Mykolaiv, Kherson, all these cities which are on fire now and where are so many uh, Russian soldiers uh, who kills our people just uh, just on the on the uh, on the street they are mostly Russian uh, they speak Russian mostly so not so many people there speak, uh, spoke uh, uh, spoke Ukrainian and it's very it's very strange Putin says that he wants to help uh, uh, to free Ukraine from Nazi but whom do you want to free there was there there are people who even believed in Russia and now you are killing them you are, he, he shoot for the civil residential buildings in Chernihiv in Sumy and um, I have a friend um, um, I have a friend, we were uh, students in um, Ukrainian Catholic, Catholic University 
we studied together. Her father is a mayor of city Trostenet. It is a uh, region Sumy. Uh, he's the mayor, and she called me yesterday. She's in Poland now, but all her family, mom, dad, grandmother, and pop, brother, they are all there. And she, she called me and said that whole city is under Russian uh, military, uh, under Russian military, and that they kill people just uh, outside. People are afraid to go out. There is, there are no medicine, no food, no electricity, nothing. Um, and uh, her dad doesn't want to leave this city because he says, I'm a mayor, I'm responsible for these people, I cannot leave them. And People are living in a in a great um, uh, in, in they are afraid you know to, to live there and which is very interesting. Now we um, today me and the governor of uh, Cherivti region, uh, Serhi Osachuk, who is by uh, by the way uh, he's pan European. And he, I, I even think that he's the first pan-European in uh, Ukraine. Um, he, he now he is the governor of Chernivtsi region, uh, the head of Chernivtsi military administration. We had a meeting with the Red Cross, Red Cross of uh, Turkey and Romania and Ukraine, and we said that we do want uh, Zelensky military administration all over the world and government would like to make green corridors for these people. If uh, not to evacuate them, uh, so at least to give them food and clothes and water. Uh, but the problem is that in uh, 2014, when the war and conflict in Donbass started, Russian military forces allowed to do such a uh, green corridor, and all the people who went to this green corridor were shot by these Russian people. So uh, we would like to make this green corridor to save people. But on the other hand, how, do we, uh, how should we do that if there is a threat that everyone who will be on this uh, uh, green corridor, Red Cross or people who, are, who, are, uh, who should be evacuated can be killed and murdered. So this is one more problem that we have now. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Ilya. I'll take the floor to Hokan Jonsson, uh, the former president of the Pan European Union of Sweden, who has raised his hand. Thank you so much. Hokan, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Valburga, and thank you very much, Irina. It's uh, heartening to hear the, the, that you still have the courage and you still have your good spirits, even though the situation must be terrible. And thank you very much for sharing your time and your insights with us tonight. Uh, I have one message and one question. The question is, if, if we are thinking of donating, uh, of course, I, I like the former question on what kind of, of equipment and, and other assistance you would need. But also, sometimes the most efficient way of helping is to direct money to organizations that are on the ground and can see the needs uh, that, that are there. Which, which help organizations would you estimate are the ones that are best suited to, to, to be uh, uh, receiving donations from people like us who wants to help and to be giving it to the right places in the right time. And, and uh, my message is that, uh, of course, the most severe situation is for you who are on the inside, you are being slaughtered and who are being killed and who are being, being shot at. But if it's any consolation to you, Putin's, uh, let's say, strategy towards the Western Europe has badly backfired. He wanted to divide us, we are more united than ever. He wanted to estrange us uh, from you, and we are closer to you than ever. And he wanted us to stay away from NATO, and uh, support for new NATO membership among Swedes and Finns is skyrocketing. So on all accounts, he has miserably failed in whatever strategy he had. That's my message to you, and I hope that's some kind of consolation to you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, you are right. Uh, we are uh, united as we've never been before. And uh, this is the, the good side of this war, if we can say this. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for, for standing uh, for, for Ukraine. Um, I, 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 I believe, I, I'm convinced that we will win because we are united. Uh, and um, 
uh, talking about donations. Um, I promised to uh, post on, fa on Facebook, Pan Europa page three, Facebook, uh, uh, all the list of uh, goods and medicine needed. I will do it uh, today. I'm sorry for not doing it before because we have so many, so 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 many of everything to do here. Uh, but also we have uh, we have um, we have I don't know uh, short. Maybe someone knows uh, Russian or Ukrainian short uh, bank bank accounts. Yeah bank accounts uh it, it is official ukrainian it is not a uh, sovereign bank account these are uh, bank accounts of uh, government or for example army or for example some um, uh, some state institutions i will post it on the pan europa ukraine page too please today and um, we have we do have uh, uh, the chernivtsi regional um, we have Chernivtsi regional bank account. Uh, we uh, it is not only for Chernivtsi, but at least Chernivtsi can use this money to help uh, uh, Eastern Ukraine. So I will post too. I will post all the state uh, bank accounts that we have and uh, Chernivtsi if someone uh, decided to to donate there. Thank you so much for for your donations. It's very important and good too because. Uh, Sometimes, uh, sometimes we have money uh, here in Ukraine, but we do not have goods, for example, vests uh, uh, for army or uh, helmets and so on. So um, we, we, do, we do need uh, both. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for you too. Thank you, Irina. So I, I take two more questions. Norbert's question, then I, I put the last question. Norbert, it's your, it's your turn. Thanks a lot. Norbert, um, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you for, for, for this initiative to, to talk to you. And uh, thank you for, for, for your, uh, uh, your um, trust and for, for everything that you try from, from the Ukrainian, Ukrainian side. Um, I have a few questions to, for the for the uh, the help stuff because um, as uh, Hakan said, uh, we think uh, which NGOs are at your place. Do you organize? Uh, as I understood you right, you organize um, eight convoys to to other cities, and how do you receive uh, those goods and who is processing them? Are they privately organized? Or uh, do you use the NGOs which, which are in, in, in Chernovitz, for example? Uh, so thank you for your question. Uh, I can say about Chernovitz military administration and Chernovitz region, but uh, I uh, am uh, quite sure that uh, in all uh, regions, uh, the system is the same. So uh, in Chernovitz, uh, the head of of Charity military administration and region is Sergei Osachuk, he's the governor, and uh, all the help that uh, we have, uh, that we receive uh, from abroad. Sometimes these are NGOs, sometimes these are just people uh, who uh, collaborate, who, who unite uh, with each other and send uh, cars, trucks, uh, buses to Ukraine uh, to, um, we are on the Ukrainian-Romanian border. So they send uh, uh, all the goods here, NGOs and uh, just, just people who are united uh, from all over the Europe and not only Europe, uh, by the way, uh, the USA too. So we receive these goods uh, we help uh, everything to have. Uh, we help uh, on the border not to have any problems so that this humanitarian good can uh, come to Ukraine very fast. Then it came to all the goods that um, that are that the charity is receiving. All of them are going to a big storage in Chernivtsi, which is controlled by governor Sergei Osachuk. And uh, the first vice governor, Bogdan Kabaluk, is always there, almost 24 uh, hours a day. Uh, they control uh, all the processes, all the help that, that we receive. And then not more than we need 
uh, not more than one day. So these goods that uh, came to the Ukraine charity, uh, so we send it to different cities. So governor uh, has an information which city uh, what uh, need ha which city what what needs are in each city, and we send it to 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 this city. So now uh, so first of all we receive it we help on the border so there is no problem with the border guard and custom then it goes to a big um common store storage that is controlled by governor and governor decides and his uh, deputies and vice governors where to go uh, by uh, having some connection with other governors and other mayors from all over ukraine um, and it, it, everything is very fast, just not more than a day we need to, to send it next. Uh, um, there is some problem uh, to, uh, to, to go to Mariupol to send these goods or to Kharkiv. But as I said before, uh, today we managed uh, how to send it to Kharkiv and Kharkiv has our humanitarian help now. Um, what, what, what more? Um, uh, so, some uh, some uh, cargoes and goods we send by buses and by uh, um, by big big trucks. I guess yeah, it, it is called like this. And some we are sending by trains because our Ukrainian train office still works, uh, evacuates people, and uh, uh, at the same time send uh, uh, humanitarian help. To those regions that are that are under Russia. Yeah. So you're sending lots of, of, of trucks into this, this direction over the day. How many of them have disappeared? Do you know that? Uh, no, unfortunately. Is it, is it only? Is it only? What is it? Has it only happened one time now for some uh, for some trucks, or, or is it is is it often disappearing? Uh, I uh, didn't know the information about the. Okay. Yeah, I know that in 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 uh, Butch and Irpen, as I said uh, before too, uh, there was a, a bad situation with this uh, when Russian shoots uh, shooted the, these uh, trucks. But um, now, I don't know, maybe yesterday too. But I uh, I do know that today we collect all these uh, uh, all these goods and. Uh, uh, these trucks are going together with convoy uh, who guards it. Moreover, there are so many blog posts uh, all over the Ukraine, Ukrainian blog posts, and these people on these blog posts uh, uh, know that uh, such cars uh, are arriving with uh, humanitarian help. So we try to manage that all of Ukrainian forces, even territorial defense, know that um, these trucks are riding, and we try to uh, make uh, them not going alone, but with convoy and a lot of them. So you would need something like a, a UN mission or something like that, which is protecting uh, the, the truck convoys with, with humanitarian help or something like that. I don't know if this works. But because it's, it could be very difficult to close the, the air the airspace for, for every... Um, because how, how can you do that? You have to shoot the, 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 the missiles or something to the, to the planes, and this would mean war to, to the whole of Europe. This is not very easy to, to manage that. So perhaps it's easier to, to work, on, work on the ground. And, and what do you no, think I, about that? I see, I see what you mean, but uh, talking about this, uh, while NATO and Europe are thinking about shelter our sky, uh, Russian have our nuclear plant station, and what uh, it can be too late to shelter the sky, you know, if everything will blow up, and uh, it's not only only Ukraine, it's uh, the whole world uh, uh, which will suffer, because it is still under Russian control, so there is no fire anymore, mm -hmm. but nuclear station is uh, Russian now. And we have four. We have four nuclear plant stations in Ukraine. So this is only the first, uh, which has uh, six reactors that is uh, occupied by, by Russians. Um, so it's, uh, it, it doesn't look uh, good. 
Thank you. Dear Irina, many yes, times, I think we have two last I haven't switched off my phone. So we have two last questions. One is for me, and then Reinhardt is allowed to ask the last question. I wanted to ask you about this, about this convoy that's getting closer and closer to Kiev with all the all the all the armored cars that we see the whole time on television. What do you hear about this? And then one other thing. I must say it's very reassuring to think that today is the 4th of March. The 4th of March is the day of self-determination. And I think that's a thing which Ukraine right now needs. And that's why I'm so glad that we meet today. And now, Reinhard, you, you, may, you may ask something. Uh, Not to drink, but ask. OK. Um, I have two questions. A short question, uh, which is much more a technical question. Uh, about this uh, convoys coming to Ukraine, bringing support, etc. Uh, if there is a private initiative, for example, Irina, when some people hire a car and put together whatever they need, medicine, etc., etc., and want to come to Chernivtsi, can they enter uh, Ukraine or do they go to the border and then the Ukrainians are coming and pick it up? It depends on uh, how these European people want. So if uh, um, if you want to go to Chernivtsi and see, uh, so it depends on you. Okay. You can pass our border and everything will be okay. To, uh, and we will uh, welcome you with the, the goods that you uh, um, sent to us and brought to us. Uh, and if you want, we can meet, uh, if these people want, we can meet them on the Romanian border, uh, between, Roma between Romania and the Ukrainian border, so in the neutral site. We can take the, the goods and uh, we can deliver it by ourselves to the storage. Okay. So two, yeah, yeah, two options is okay. And, and, and the second question is, uh, you mentioned this massive disinformation campaign, which is coming from uh, from Russia, like the Nazis took over in uh, in, in in Ukraine and all the uh, killings in Donbas, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is, by the way, also spread here in in EU countries, and uh, there are a lot of crazy people here in Austria who still believe in that. And we see that the uh, media in Russia are more and more censored and completely under control by the government uh, of Putin. How is the situation in Ukraine? I mean, we heard that uh, some, um, some uh, radio stations were shot in, in Kiev. Do you still have independent media or do you still have the possibility that, for example, a radio can spread information, can send you know, I've been to one of the radio stations in, in Chernivtsi. Can this, are they still working? Yes, uh, they do work uh, in Ukraine everywhere except uh, Kherson, as uh, there are so many Russian uh, people, Russian military forces in Kherson, and they for real occupied whole Kherson, except uh, that, that they uh, didn't uh, raise Russian flag, there is still Ukrainian flag there. So um, in Kherson, there is no TV or radio, Ukrainian TV or radio. Um, several days ago, in Kyiv, Russian bomb shot our uh, main station, TV station, the main station in Ukraine or Kyiv, uh, I didn't know, but this is the main one. Uh, and we uh, haven't had uh, TV, uh, some Ukrainian TV or channels uh, for several hours because our authorities said that they were ready for this and they were uh, prepared. So they renew this just in several hours. Um, talking about informational campaign, of course, we have so many fakes so many fakes. Moreover, there are so many uh, groups in Telegram or Facebook where some uh, um, people say that um, that Western is say to Western Ukrainians uh, that we have uh, uh, to uh, we do not have to stand uh, people from the east that people from the east uh, Eastern Ukraine should go there. So they uh, make us. Uh, um, they try to argue us between ourselves. 
but luckily this is not our story anymore we will stay united now and i hope forever uh, also i would like to mention that today or yesterday i i i, I forgot because there are so many of things and i just didn't know what, what is today and what was yesterday so yesterday or, or today in Berlin, this is uh, a region on the border with poland in um, some sites of uh, Berlin uh, um, administrations, in region, uh, re regional administration sites. Um, in these sites, th th these sites were hacked and there was uh, information, uh, it was written the information that uh, Zelensky capitulates. Do you have the world? Yeah, capitulates and ask people to give up and uh, so on. But immediately everyone knew that this is a fake and so on. Uh, and in Vinica, there was the same story yesterday or today. These fake uh, sites were hacked and fakes were um, written, but we didn't believe that. Even now, Zelensky says uh, that uh, Russia wants to make Bido uh, deep fake with uh, the face of Zelensky. He will say that people, please give up. Uh, the war is over. We have to be under Russia. But everyone uh, clearly, certainly knows that it's impossible for Zelensky to say this. Everyone believes that Zelensky, uh, and uh, we do know that we will never give up, and we will never forgive murderers of uh, civilians uh, that Russia now uh, do every day, every day. A lot of my, I would like just to mention one more time because it's uh, it's my pain now that people uh, not only die but suffer without medicine in the. Uh, in the underground of houses, in parkings, uh, uh, they just cannot go outside. They have nothing to eat. There are so many little, little uh, kids that doesn't deserve it, you know. And uh, Russia says they are nasty. Really? Uh, nasty children who are five uh, years old? I didn't know if you hear, but there are cases when uh, women... Uh, get to uh, get burned i don't know uh, give, give a life to how to say this give a life to a child in the uh, underground station in the subways so um i think that if uh, we can manage this we can uh, uh, we can win yeah yeah irina let me just tell you we are very took you friday evening time to be with us but you see Pan Europe from across Europe is standing behind you. If ever you need anything, you know who to ask. Your pan European friends, obviously. And now I want to say thank you to everybody who's participated. And I think we all have been reinforced that we really have to stand even more closely behind Ukraine and behind our pan European Union in Ukraine. And please don't forget, if you get in touch with our president, tell him our very best regards. And the next time we hope that we can make a double meeting with him and with you. Thank you so much and have Thank a great uh, weekend. Thank you so, so much for you too. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here, for finding this time for, for me and for Ukraine and for helping. And I just, this is a big, big thank from my heart to your hearts. Please keep safe. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraina. Slava Ukraina.